you doing, Rick? Dave, nice good, to see you. Good to see you. So tell me a little bit about Enterprise Warehousing Solutions. Well, what we are, we're a full-service systems integrator, mm -hmm. and we're focused in on decision support, business intelligence, and data warehousing. Now, how did you end up getting to be known as the expert on <laughs> metadata? That's such <laughs> an interesting topic. Well, I'll tell you, it's funny you bring it up. Uh, quite a number of years ago, I was working on a project, mm -hmm. and I was actually working on the ETL process for this company. Right. Well, it turned out we kind of got all our work done, mm -hmm. and I said, well, you know, it's time we need to have a metadata piece. Well, I got elected to it, which basically everyone else stepped back. And <laughs> I thought, you were in charge. And I was in charge. <laughs> so first thing I did was research it. Right. Found almost nothing. Mm -hmm. There was really no books on it, no articles at the time, very mm -hmm. little on the web. So I just started researching it. We wound up implementing a repository. Right. And I took my findings from that, wrote an article. Uh, it kind of got a great deal of publicity. Mm -hmm. And uh, started speaking on the topic, and uh, the rest, as they say, and is history. And one thing led to the other, and you there you have it. it. Okay, now, you know, metadata is data about data. I think everybody knows that, but drill into it a little bit. What does that mean exactly? You know, it's funny you bring it up. When I first started working on metadata, it took all of maybe five minutes to find that definition. It's data about data. Right. And we all conceptually understand it, mm -hmm. but when you put on your integrator's hat and say data about data, what is that? Right. And the best way I like to explain metadata is to use an analogy of a card catalog in sure. a library. Sure. Think about it. You have a metadata repository to your data warehousing systems. It's just like a card catalog to your library. Right. Uh, pick one of your favorite subjects. My family. Rich's family. Well, let's suppose Rich wants to go to his local library, which of right. course has volumes on your family. Sure. And you want to go and find some information about it. Now, do you just go into the library, kind of walk the halls looking? Well, no, see. I always go right to the catalog. You go to the card catalog. Because what does the card catalog do? It shows you where you have to go to find the information you want. And it shows you, is this really the information you're looking for? Right, because I couldn't go straight to the books. There's too many books. I don't know how they're organized. And, and until I actually look at the catalog, I'm not even really sure what it is I'm looking for. Exactly right. And a, a metadata repository functions just like a card catalog. Mm -hmm. The metadata repository is the card catalog to your systems. Now, can you have a library without a card catalog? You could, but it'd be very hard to search. <laughs> exactly, and that's the same thing as a data warehousing system. Right. When you don't have that repository, it makes it very hard to search and very hard to maintain. Right. right. Now. But your career has been dedicated to <laughs> metadata. Why, why focus on that niche? Career weekends and, uh, <laughs> and late evenings. But yeah, the reason why is because when I first started looking into it, I'd realized that metadata made sense. Mm -hmm. That not only did it make sense, but it was critical for our industry to move forward. I if you look at the biggest problems facing companies today, right. really there are two things that jump out at you. One is our systems are inflexible and not integrated. Right. Right. Anyone who doesn't believe that, look at the year 2K problem. Right. Now, wh what is the Y2K? Well, <laughs> yeah, well, Y2K is, is about a simple thing in general, right? Yes. It's about four digits and only using two instead. That's right. And, and I'm, I'm an old COBOL programmer, right. and I coded some of that. Mm -hmm. um, and you're exactly right. It's just changing the format of a field. Right. But yet we know it's a multi-billion dollar problem. Yeah, well, one of the reasons is, is people don't even know where those dates are in every one of their applications. That's right. It's hidden. Because the days of keeping your IT staff together for 15, 20 years are over. Right. People move all the time. We, right. we have a huge work shortage. So understanding your systems, understanding how they've been built, where all your data is at, mm -hmm. is critical. How it's used. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. right. And on the other end of that, not only are our systems inflexible, but we're really not delivering, delivering value to our business users. There was a survey taken recently where they polled CEOs and they asked them, do you feel your systems are delivering value to your business users? Over 84% said no. No? No. Why? What were the reasons they cited in that? Really what they looked at, they said, you know, our systems, for, and it was just a blanket question that they asked them, do you feel your systems meet the needs of your business? Mm -hmm. And I can think of a couple of reasons why the percentage is so high. One is business is changing more rapidly than ever. Right. We're in a global marketplace. Right. And if you think about it, years ago we had, the cons we had this mass production concept where build it and they will come. We'll build a uh, 100 watches that will look like this, sure. or 100,000, and right. people will just buy them. Now we're trying to know you as a consumer. That's right. And that's you're, you're sort of trying to target markets of one now, yes. right, based on information. That's right. We want to know you as a person. That's right. So when you walk into your library, we want to know that Rich wants to know about his family. That's right. That's right. Okay, so now tell me about the challenges in building a metadata repository. I mean, what a, you do this a lot. What are the key things 
that you find that you could advise people on that they ought to watch out for and what they need to focus on? I think there are really three key challenges. One is when you look at these repositories, mm -hmm there's really a lack of metadata understanding that's out there and I think shows like this and, and articles and books and that mm -hmm. really help solve that. If you look out there today it's hard getting good information on metadata. Right. Uh, it's quite often I go somewhere and I, and I hear people try to talk about it or write about it it's really not quite accurate. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a real lack of understanding. I think the second thing is when you look at those architectures they're quite complicated. So you look at an integration architecture right. where you're trying to bring metadata from all the disparate sources, bring it in and load a repository. Mm -hmm. It's not simple. What I always tell people is metadata is not easy, just like any other major IT initiative. Right. So when you think about what you have to do to build a repository, it's just like building a warehouse. You have to do source system analysis. Sure. You have to extract data, integrate it, load it, right. and then provide access. Right. And that's not simple. One of the things that helps complicate that architecture is the fact that our models are not standard. Mm -hmm. The meta models, and that's the physical data models which right. store the metadata. Right. Currently, every product has their own version of these. So, and we're in a best of breed marketplace where everyone's trying to plug their products in. So it really makes it quite difficult. You know, another thing I found is one of the most important aspects of successfully building a metadata repository is how you work with the business units in the company describing the data accurately and really having the hard discussions about which what they really meant and how does this component relate to this component is one of your keys to success because if you don't do that then the data in your metadata repository isn't accurate. Absolutely and, and let me take that a step further. I was at one client where they said you know we have loads of great business metadata mm -hmm. but we don't understand our business users don't care for it. So I went and started researching how they captured it. Right. Turns out the way they were capturing it is they had hired an IT person to sit in a room, never talk to the business, and write his definitions of their business. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the wrong way, that's, <laughs> that's the wrong way to do it. I mean, the, the key way, the key thing that I, I think we've learned here, and your feedback would be important, is focus on the business requirements right. and what the business users, how they describe their data. Absolutely, and empower them to change it. Right. Put it in their hands because they want it. Maybe you take the first pass at it yourself, but give them a front end where they can manage it themselves, and that'll get you the biggest sure. payoff. Sure. Now, you also mentioned standards. Tell me why standards are so important in building a metadata repository. Yeah, standards are critical, Rich, because when you look at the marketplace today, mm -hmm. we're in a best of breed marketplace, which means companies typically don't buy a suite of data warehousing products that just handle all of their needs. What they really do is they want to use a particular type of OLAP front end, particular type of ETL process. And what happens is you have to create your own links to link all these process to processes together, right. many times redoing the work at each step of the way. Right. Now with standard meta models, mm -hmm. all these tools would have to do is just link to the model right. and then they can share data. It kind of acts as a hub Sure. between all of these. So now, if we do a great job, we're going to talk a little bit later about standards, right? Yeah. But if we do a great job on standards and making sure that we solve some of those problems, can you give us a little bit of a vision on, on the next step that we can go after that? Absolutely. And actually, one of the things, it's kind of interesting you bring up uh, your guys' efforts on standards. About three years ago, somebody asked me about a particular initiative that was occurring. And my opinion at the time, I said, we will not have standards in this industry until a major player decides we have to. Because mm -hmm. really it can't be done at the smaller efforts. Right. And I think that um, not only is this the best effort to date, but it really holds the most promise we've ever had to getting standards. And I think with the way it's going, I think we're going to get there. What these standards are going to do, it's going to allow companies who purchase all these different tools, number one, to allow them to work together. Right much better than the way they do today. Yeah, absolutely. Because today, we have to manually write a lot of these interfaces, and it takes tremendous amounts of time. Right. And then, you want to get the latest version of the newest tools, so guess what? Rewrite your interfaces. Second thing it does, it will allow these, our, our customers out there mm -hmm. to, to bring in all their metadata and provide access to it. I think this is critical. If you look at the trends in our industry, I think we're looking t for knowledge management to start gaining more speed. Absolutely. And I think metadata is one of the key things involved in it. Because really what we're trying to go towards is, I like to call it the metadata-driven enterprise. Right. Where Y2K is a wonderful example. Where we can run impact analyses across all of our system and say, here's everywhere we coded our date less than four bytes. Right, right. And here's all the code. 
Well, that would sure make it simple. So building a metadata repository as a key component of data warehousing enables knowledge management and business solutions. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Rich. Great to see you.